In this week's video, we'll review the hard evidence, past and present, to answer the question, is the stock market starting to wave red flags? This quote applies to both bullish periods, such as 1997 through 2000, and bearish periods, such as 2007 through 2008. Therefore, as we review the charts this week, we can learn a lot by asking the question, does 2014 look more like the red years or more like the green years? To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. We're looking at three charts of the Dow Jones Industrials, one from 1987, one from 1998, and one from 2014. We'll explain these basic concepts once for new viewers, and then we'll use them throughout the video. In 1987, we had what's known as a full-bore bearish look before a lot of the pain occurred after Black Monday. What is a full bore bearish look? It's when price in red here is below both of the moving averages. Blue is below red and the slopes of both are down telling us that the probability of bad things happening has increased at this point here. Conversely from a bullish perspective a full bore bullish look is when price in black here is above both moving averages blue is above red and the slopes of both of the moving averages are up telling us that the probability of good things happening has increased here and indeed good things did happen in 1998 looking at 2014 we currently have a full bore bullish look after the recent scare therefore it's fairly easy to discern that the present day chart looks a lot more like 1998 than it does the early stages of the poor period in 1987. We can also notice that the Dow made a new weekly closing high this week. All things being equal, if you're a bull, that's what you'd like to see. Why? A downtrend has to start with a lower high and a lower low. If we have a higher high, we've got some work to do before a formation like this can form. We'll be using the exact same concepts here so we can move a little bit more quickly. This is the NASDAQ or tech stocks here can see in 2002 when bad things were happening we had a full bore bearish look relatively early in this process telling us that the probability of bad things happening was higher here than it was here and indeed bad things did happen in 2003 where the charts helpful from a probabilistic perspective in terms of helping us see that things were improving the answer is yes. You can see the slopes of the moving averages start to turn up here. And by the time we get to this point here, we have a full bore bullish look telling us that the probability of good things happening is higher here than it was here. It's important to note that everything we do speaks to probabilistic outcomes. Probabilities acknowledge that good things and bad things can happen from a chart pattern or a chart look like this. In this case, good things did happen. Does 2014 look more like this period here or this period here? The answer is relatively simple. It looks a lot more like the probability of good things happening period in 2003. Since the disaster in 2008 and subsequent bottom in 2009 is a little more fresh in our emotional minds. We'll close the video with three examples using 2008, 2009, and compare them 
to 2014. This is the S&P 500 weekly as of the close on Friday, September 5th, 2014. You can see we've got a new weekly closing high here, similar to what we recently saw on the chart of the Dow. And we've got a full bore bullish look after breaking above what was previous resistance. All good things from a chart perspective. It's relatively easy to discern that 2014 looks a lot more like this favorable period from a risk reward perspective in 2009 than this yellow and red flag period here. It's important to note that the observable evidence here in 2008 is in full bore bearish mode before very, very bad things happen. If you want to build an investment model that will most likely be disappointing from a results perspective, the best way to do that is to start with data, dump a bunch of data into a program, and then optimize a model to fit the data, and then use that in the future. That's known as curve fitting, and that's something that we would like to avoid because it's not very effective. If you'd like to build a more effective model, Start with that makes sense to me type economic principles and then go back and apply those principles to data and then figure out how you want to weight your model and use the data to tweak it a little bit, not to build it. Example, it makes sense that when people are confident about economic outcomes and confident about the future, they would prefer to own growth-oriented stocks relative to more defensive or conservative bonds. We learned a lot in 2008 here when stocks, the S&P 500, relative to bonds or risk-on relative to risk-off, flipped over into a full-bore bearish look here in 2008, telling us that the probability of bad things happening had increased, and indeed bad things did happen. Conversely, here, when investors became more confident about future outcomes, when the black line here is rising, or the ratio of stocks relative to bonds, it's telling us that the demand or conviction to own stocks is now improving relative to the demand or conviction to own more defensive-oriented fixed income instruments. Full bore bullish look here before good things happen. Here we also have this week a new weekly closing high. Again, that takes the lower high scenario off the table. This here is a lower high relative to this high. And this here is a lower low relative to this low here. This is lower. This is what a downtrend looks like. A series of lower highs and lower lows. Well, we don't have a lower high here on the chart in 2014, and we didn't have a lower high here in 2009. Since no risk on risk off ratio indicator or time frame or method for that matter, is perfect. There are many things that we can do that can help us from a probabilistic perspective, but none of them in isolation is perfect standing alone from a risk management perspective. Therefore, you want to diversify your inputs using different risk on risk off ratios, different time frames, different indicators, and different methods. One of the inputs to the CCM market model is risk on. I'd rather be long relative to risk off, I'd rather short stocks. In 2008, we could learn a lot about all stocks. At this point here, when we went to a full bore bearish look, telling us that the probability of good things happening being short was now higher than the probability of good things happening being long. And if that's the case, if SH, or shorting the S&P 500, is a better risk-reward bet 
than being long, then you really have to question all of your stocks at this point. Full bore bearish look, bad things happened after that. 2009, full bore bullish look, long relative to short, telling us that the probability of good things happening here was much, much higher than it was here or here. How does the chart look in 2014? We broke above what was previous resistance here, a good sign, and we've morphed back into a full bore bullish look. And this is why the CCM market model has been redeploying cash as the observable evidence improved. We just want to keep regular viewers and clients up to date, so we'll move quickly on these last two charts. This is a chart that we review often in these weekly videos. This is the S&P 500 weekly. We know that the probability of bad things happening increases when momentum, or Williams percent R, closes below overbought territory. After this point, bad things happened. We remain in overbought territory and from a probabilistic perspective when we move and close in overbought territory the probability of good things happening increases and indeed in this case good things did happen we'll keep an open mind going into next week but for now this chart is checking bullish boxes in the ccm market model Everything that we just said about the weekly chart of the S&P 500 applies to the weekly chart of the NASDAQ as of the close on Friday, September 5th. We remain in overbought territory. If this chart here morphs into a look like this, this, or this, the market model will start to check some bearish boxes. How do we track all of this and convert it into a usable and actionable format in a reasonable amount of time? The sub-models, we answer binary questions, some of them manually done, some of them programmed in Excel, and we also enter in unbiased and hard data. The sub-models allow us to get a handle on the market's current profile, and the master CCM market model then looks at the current profile, compares it to past profiles, and recommends a prudent allocation between risk assets such as stocks and conservative assets such as bonds. Conservative assets can consist of cash, bonds, currency, or any number of investment options. If you'd like to learn more about the market model or our money management services, you can visit our website Follow along on Twitter, Facebook, read our blog, Short Takes, or watch past videos on the Shivako Capital Channel on YouTube. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.